Studio 6 Welcome to Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. An intimate space where every week you receive inspiration about the fascinating world of interior design and all the benefits and effects in your lifestyle. My name is Francesca, and we will create meaningful conversations to unveil the enigmatic perception of interior design as a discipline that simply focuses on aesthetics. We will expose everything from interiors to its relationship to architecture, surroundings, history, and culture. We will challenge the misconception of interior spaces confined in architectural boundaries. We will understand that interior spaces provide the setting for human activity and are created to fulfill human desires and needs where sensory pleasures and engagement are celebrated. That is the built environment, the connection between individuals, physical spaces, experience, emotions, and its social consequences. I am your host, and I invite you to join the design conversations that will elevate your consciousness about interiors. Consciousness that will embrace the beautiful possibilities of manifesting all your senses in your space. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode two of Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. I am super happy to be here with you on another Friday of Valuable Design Conversations. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving time with your family and friends. I certainly had a great and meaningful time with my loved ones. You are probably shopping and taking advantage of Black Friday sales, or you are probably still enjoying the good food and company from yesterday. So thank you for tuning in with me to create this intimate space between us. This podcast is presented by Studio Chess Interior Architecture Design Studio. In this second episode, we are going to converse about aesthetics and the relevance of its main principles in interior design. Have you heard about this term before? Aesthetics refers to the nature and expression of beauty and taste in an interior space. Aesthetics, together with researching, concept development, and the execution of design according with the fundamental and cultural needs of the users are the central pillars of a design practice. Aesthetics lie in one's ability to align the pleasing appearance of a place with the purpose of its surroundings. Let's dive in to discover the relevance of its main principles. Aesthetics vary over the course of time and differ with geographical, social, and cultural norms. It is scientifically proven that one's environment is instrumental in determining their mood, lifestyle, and thought process. Aesthetically pleasing interior spaces can positively influence one's mental health and can dramatically impact users' behavior. Where do you prefer to spend time? In a stimulating, eye-pleasing interior space or in a cluttered background that may be upsetting to look at? Innovations and new ideas are key to the evolution of any profession, and interior design is no exception. An organized discipline recognizes a set of elements and principles that are fundamental to its working. There are six main principles of design to organize interior spaces, materiality, finishes, art, and furnishings to satisfy the functional and aesthetics requirements of a project. Maybe you don't know exactly how they work in interiors, but I am sure you have heard these terms before. Let's start with the first principle. Balance. This is the first and most important principle. This represents the arrangement of elements in a composition to achieve visual equilibrium. Balance is important in interior design because every interior is composed of a variety of forms, shapes, color, lines, patterns, texture, and light. Balance depends on the idea of visual weight. To the human eye, some elements appear heavier than others by the nature of their size, shape, complexity, color, texture, or location in space. The decision to choose any of the following balances will drastically affect the visual outcome. Symmetrical balance. Dividing the space into two halves and filling it with equal visual weights. It is generally very stable, 
static, and typically connotes formality. Imagine a big living room where the same furniture composition is placed in both sides of the space, meaning the composition of a sofa, side tables, cocktail table, and two armchairs are located twice in the same space as a mirror image. Pretty straightforward, right? Asymmetrical balance. Using objects with equal visual weights in opposite directions to create an illusion of balance. It is generally considered informal and dynamic. Visualize an artwork composition on the wall. A dominant painting piece on the center of the wall. To the right side, a built-in wall niche displaying sculptural pieces and to the left side, a built-in bookcase full of art books and other decorative objects. That composition as a whole creates an asymmetrical balance. Understandable, right? Radial balance. It is a type of symmetrical balance in which elements are arranged uniformly about a central point. By its very nature, radial balance usually focuses attention on the center of the grouping. It is associated with stairs and round visual weights. A round dining table with eight chairs is an example of radial balance. Let's analyze the next principle. Contrast. Contrast is the second most important principle in interior design. The juxtaposition of dissimilar elements is a necessary condition of life. Left does not exist without right, and black does not exist without white. Contrast is achieved by the combination of color, form, and the space provided. Contrast is the way we perceive the difference between things, create importance, and add interest and variety to our environment. The possibilities are endless to choose whether we want to contrast two colors with a third one or two forms with a third form. For example, in an art gallery, there is a photography installation about fashion design. One side of the gallery displays black and white photography and the other side of the gallery displays full color photography. There is a contrast of color within the same medium. Let's continue with the next principle, rhythm. Rhythm is one of the most powerful design principles which represents the repetition of elements in a regular pattern. Because rhythm sets up a sequence of multiple elements through space, it also includes a time component as the eye or body moves past the individual pieces. It refers to the flow of weights so that when the user witnesses the room, it appears pleasing to the human eye. Visualize a space using continuous architectural features such as columns. Or it can also be achieved by an alternation of shapes, color, and textures in continuous related movement. Rhythm is key. Let's move on to the next principle. Emphasis and focus refers to the central focal point of the space. Within any interior, there are some elements that are more important than others. The important elements may be things like a spectacular view from a window, the artwork in a museum, a special merchandise display in a retail store, or the bed in a bedroom. A space in which everything is equally important tends to be bland, boring, and lifeless. It is important to understand the various dominant and subordinate parts of a space to create a design that enhances these hierarchies and provides a focus on the important features. Next principle, proportion. Proportion refers to the relationship between the sizes of two objects. This principle by definition is relative. It is also a matter of judgment and situation, and for interior design, it is dependent on the three-dimensional relationship of object and space. Don't you think that a large sofa will look out of proportion with a small cocktail table in front of it? This is where you want to consider the length or diameter of the table in comparison to the length of the sofa. Last but not least important principle. Harmony and unity. The results in a composition in which all the pieces seem to belong together and work to reinforce the overall design theme. It is the way in which the wide variety of forms, shapes, 
colors, textures, and patterns found in an interior is balanced into a unified, satisfying composition. It is the agreement of the parts to each other and to the whole. It is often one of the most difficult design principles to apply because there are no fixed rules and because it includes the opposing concepts of unity, variety, rhythm, and emphasis. The whole process of envisioning, designing, and curating the aesthetics of an interior space refers to the process of bringing big and small components together in order to devise a creative collective within a design scheme. Aesthetically pleasing interior spaces come as a breath of fresh air and relief. Take this with you. The ultimate goal of an interior environment is to move forward the design intent of a space and engage the user in meaningful ways. If you feel identified and connected with this podcast, please join the design conversations and invite your friends and family to be part of our community. I will be here every Friday to chat with you about interesting topics within the fascinating interior design world. You cannot miss the next episode where I will talk with you about the elements of design and how they interact with the principles of design that we just discussed. If there is a specific topic that you want me to discuss, or if you have any questions, please feel free to DM me through Instagram or Facebook. Also, you can send me an email at thinkdesignprovoke at gmail.com. Please follow me on my social media platforms at Studio Chess to continue the design conversation. In the episode notes, I am including the contact links for your reference. If you find value in this content, please share this episode in your social media or chats, and remember to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite audio platform. Thank you for your attention and for being on the other side. It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you. Happy Black Friday and enjoy your day. I'll chat with you next Friday, and remember, Everything in the built environment is by design and you are part of it. Ciao, ciao.